It's common to want a function to return some data if it was successful, or return an error if it was unsuccessful. We usually model this using throwing functions, because if the function call succeeds, we get data back. But if an error is thrown, then our catch block is thrown, so we can handle both independently. But what if the function call doesn't return immediately? We looked at networking code previously using URL session. Let's look at another example now, adding to the default Swift UI template code. I'll say dot on appear. Let URL equals URL string https colon slash slash www.apple.com. I'll force and wrap that, I know it's safe. Then URL session dot shared dot data task with URL data response error in. If data is not equal to nil, print we got data. Else if let error equals error, print error.localize description. And then add dot resume to that data task. As soon as the text view loads, the network request will start. Fetch some data from apple.com and print one of two messages, depending on whether the request worked or not. If you recall, I said the completion closure will either have data or error set to a value. It can't be both, and it can't be neither, because both those situations don't make sense. However, because URL session doesn't enforce this constraint for us, we have to write code to handle the impossible cases, just to make sure all bases are covered. Swift has a solution for this confusion, and it's a type called result. This gives us the either or behavior we want while also working great with non-blocking functions, functions that perform the work asynchronously so they don't block the main code from running. As a bonus, it also allows us to return specific types of errors, which makes it easy to know what went wrong. The syntax is a little bit odd at first, which is why I'm warming you up slowly. This stuff is really useful, but if you jump in at the deep end, it can feel like a step backward. What we're going to do is create a wrapper for our networking code so it uses Swift's result type, meaning you can clearly see the before and after. First, we need to define what errors can be thrown. You can define as many as you want, but here we'll say the URL is bad, the request failed, or an unknown error occurred. So, put this enum outside the content view struct. Enum network error, conforms to error, case bad URL, request failed, and unknown. Next, we're going to write a method that sends back a result. Remember, result is designed to represent some sort of success or failure. And in this instance, we're going to say the success case will contain the string of whatever came back from the network, and the error will be some sort of network error. We're going to write the same method four times in increasing complexity so you can see how things build up. To start with, we're just going to send back a bad URL error immediately, which means adding this method to content view. Func fetch data from URL string, string, and it'll return a result string network error. Inside there, I'll say dot failure dot bad URL. As you can see, that method's return type is result string network error, which is what says it will either be a string on success or a network error on failure. This is still a blocking function call, albeit a very fast one. What we really want is a non-blocking call, which means we can't send back our result as a return value. Instead, we have to make our method accept two parameters, one for the URL to fetch, and one that's a completion closure that will be called with a value. This means the method itself returns nothing. Its data is passed back using the completion closure, which is called at some point in the future. Again, we're just going to make this return a bad URL failure to keep things simple. Here's how it looks. Func, I'll add completion, result, string, network error, returns void. Remove the return value, and in the body, I'll do completion.failure.badurl. The reason we have a completion closure is that we can now make this method non-blocking. We can kick off some asynchronous work, make the method return so the rest of the code can continue, then call the completion closure at any point later on. There is one small complexity here, and although I've mentioned it briefly before, now it becomes important. 
When we pass a closure into a function, Swift needs to know whether it will be used immediately or whether it might be used later on. If it's used immediately, the default, then Swift is happy to just run the closure. But if it's used later on, then it's possible whatever created the closure has been destroyed and no longer exists as memory, in which case the closure would also be destroyed and could no longer run. To fix this, Swift lets us mark closure parameters as at escaping, which means this closure might be used outside of the current run of this method, so please keep its memory alive until we're done. In the case of our method, we're going to run some asynchronous work, then call the closure when we're done. That might happen immediately, or it might take a few minutes. We don't really care. The point is, the closure still needs to be around after the method's returned, which means we have to mark it at escaping. If you're worried about forgetting this, don't be. Swift will always refuse to build your code unless you add the at escaping attribute. So here's the third version of our function, which uses at escaping for the closure so we can call it asynchronously. I'll add at escaping here, and then use dispatchQ.main.async around our completion closure call. Remember, that completion closure can be called at any point in the future, and it will still work just as well. And now for our fourth version of the method, we're going to blend our result code with the URL session code from earlier. This will have the exact same function signature. It accepts a string and a closure and returns nothing. But now we're going to call the completion closure in different ways. If the URL is bad, we'll call completion.failure.badURL. If we get valid data back from our request, we'll convert it to a string, then call completion.success string data. If we get an error back from our request, we'll call completion.failure.request failed. If we somehow don't get data or an error back, we'll call completion.failure.unknown. The only new thing in there is how to convert a data instance to a string. But you'll see that in just a moment. Okay, let's write the fourth pass of our method. First, we'll check the URL's okay, otherwise return with a failure. Guard let URL equals URL string, URL string, else completion dot failure dot bad URL and return. Then URL session dot shared dot data task with URL data response error in. Inside here, the task is now completed, we can push our work back to the main thread. So I'll say dispatchq.main.async. Then if let data equals data. If we're here, it means everything's worked, we can convert the data to a string and send it back. To do that, we say let string data equals string decoding data as utf8.self and then call completion dot success string data. Else if error is not equal to nil, if we're here, we had a network failure. So I'll call completion dot failure dot request failed. And then else, this really ought not to be possible, yet here we are, we'll do completion dot failure dot unknown. And then resume the data task. I know it took quite a bit of work, but I want to explain it step by step, because there's a lot to take in. What it gives us is a much cleaner API, because we can now always be sure we either get a string or an error. It's impossible to get both of them or neither of them, because that's not how a result works. Even better, if we do get an error, then it must be one of the cases specified in network error, which makes error handling much easier. All we've done so far is write functions that use result. We haven't written anything that handles the result that gets sent back. Remember, regardless of what happens, the result always carries two pieces of information. The type of the result, success or failure, and something inside there. For us, that's either a string or a network error. Behind the scenes, result is actually an enum with an associated value. And Swift has a very particular syntax for dealing with these. We can switch on the result, and write cases such as case.success let's stir to mean if this was successful, pull out the string inside into a new constant called stir. It's easier to see all this in action. So let's attach our new method to our on appear closure and handle all possible cases. I'll say self.fetchdata from apple.com. 
result in. Switch result. Case success let stir. Print stir. Case dot failure let error. Switch error. Case dot bad URL print bad URL. Case dot request failed. Print network problems. Case dot unknown. Print unknown error. Hopefully now you can see the benefit. Not only have we eliminated the uncertainty of checking what was sent back, but we also eliminated optionality entirely. There isn't even a need for a default case for the error handling because all possible cases of network error are specifically covered.